hello, hello, it's me, Camila Rose, and we are here for the Taurus 2024 general predictions, love, and money. So, welcome. <laughs> Go ahead and hit that subscribe button. Go ahead and hit that like button if you enjoy hearing about what's coming up for you for the year. And let's get right into it. Let's figure out, oh, actually, we need to pick your card of the year. So I'm going to pull from the Major Arcana, and we're going to just get a general sense for what the vibe's going to carry for you all for 2024 for Taurus. 2024 Taurus card of the year. What do we get? Ooh, the lovers. Very nice. Very nice. Very nice, Taurus. Okay, so, Taurus, you may be entering into a relationship. You may literally be in a space of the lovers. But more than likely, because you got a lot going on in sign of Taurus this year. I mean, a lot going on. Um, ooh, I was looking at your astrology. January 20th, I believe, Pluto enters... Well, Sun enters and Pluto enters into Aquarius. And although that is not your sign, that is squared to you all. So that means anytime anything's going on in Aquarius, that brings tension to your sign. It brings a space for growth, for expansion, for exploration. But it's pulling at each other. They're not really jiving. You know, when it's in opposition, so all this is Scorpio energy you've been accounting, that's oppositional energy. And when it's oppositional energy, what that means is that you two have something in common. There's an energy to work together. But when it's square energy and it's like this, yeah, this this point, y'all are going in different directions. <laughs> different directions. Nobody's getting along here. So you can flow together. You just have to figure out how to make it work. So you've got fixed air and you've got fixed earth. So you've got fixed ideas, fixed way of looking at things that's ruled by this idea of like how to break through that fixed nature, how to expand and go further than that. And then you've got fixed earth, which is your sign, which is Taurus, which is really trying to ground down all the ideas that are coming up in that energy of flow and movement and um, will to survive from Aries into something that can be sustainable and that can last past just one season so you have these energies kind of coming together so when you get this square energy when you see people talking about something's going on in Aquarius I want you to think of okay how do I work with individuals who may be trying to break out of the mold try something different who would do I feel myself being pushed to think differently about a situation to express myself in a different way, to explore that. And you'll look at what planets are showing up there. We have Pluto, which Pluto is death and destruction, but it's revolution, it's rebirth, it's all these things about just really like a system or a way of being has come to an end. It served its purpose, its time is over, and it's time to look at, okay, what do, how do we fix this? And especially in Aquarius, we're looking at how do we make this better for everyone? So you may be looking at some of the things going on in your own life and saying, how is it that I function better in the community? How do I get along with my friends better? Maybe you're experiencing a turnover in your friendships. Now, this Pluto and Aquarius and um, it's going to be it's going to be a while that that energy is going to be there. So this is going to be an ongoing thing. It's a long period. So it's just going to be energy that's kind of lurking under the surface. It may not be very substantial to you until maybe it becomes in exact like, you know, what degree your sun rising moon whatever sign it is you're looking at until it gets closer to that something like that but it's just going to be an underlying pressure that's kind of running through the system and I also think that the lovers is very relevant for you for this year because in February I believe on the 21st going through the 24th or 25th we have the Venus and Mars conjunction in Aquarius as well. So there's a lot about your relationships going on here, the way that you relate to relationships, your understanding of them, how your relationships function in um with your friends like are they a part of your friend group is that where you're finding your relationship are you finding your passion and exploration and your survival through how you function in the community looking at those kind of things kind of coming together and what does independence truly mean for you in partnership how do you make that work and that's a beautiful segue into the lover's card because the lover's card is yes like i said it could just be relationship in this one, we have two individuals, they're buying a house or they're looking at a house, like they're taking the next step in their relationship. 
But the lover's card also represents the energy of becoming more independent and really understanding like what is your next step in life. When you're taking the next step in a relationship, you are moving from perhaps where you lived or your closest relationships were with your family and friends to now starting to be in a close relationship with someone else. And you're really deciding, okay, I have been conditioned. I've been trained. I've been, I've learned all these ways about what my life should look like and the choices I should make and who I should be with from my family unit and my environment growing up. And now that I'm adult, it's time for me to make my own choice, move into my own space. And it's really that process that the lovers is looking at about whether you, how you decide to integrate that, how you decide who you will be as a person and how you put that into practice and move forward with others. So that's your energy and your vibe for this year. Let's see. We're doing seasons so or quarters. Ooh, OK, so your first quarter, January, February, March. We really get the musician in reverse. All right, you are maybe feeling a little unempowered. Sorry about that. Um, you may, or maybe there's someone around you who feels that way, or you're in a situation that's coming across that way. Yeah, it might be a relationship where there just seems like there's something more that you need, but that you don't know how to get it. Maybe the relationship is looking like there's something more that you need that you're not sure where that needs to go. You have the Empress here. Now the Empress is, uh, is an energy of, she's sitting like on an egg and the egg is growing. It's fertility, it's growth. Maybe you want to have children and you're contemplating like, if I have children, what will that be like? We do have a page of cups right next to it. Maybe that's the child that's in the cup. You know, you want to expand and grow in your relationship. Where do you want your relationships to go? Where do you want your partnerships to go? Um, and how do you do that in a way that supports your ability to be yourself and maintain your independence? But in this case, without where well, you're already feeling like maybe you might have lost part of yourself or that there is something that you need outside of yourself that you just don't have. So is there a skill set you feel like you're missing when it comes to partnerships or when it comes to creating new things? Um, take a look at that and really, really have that conversation with yourself and get into your feelings around that. Okay, we did get two cards here. Yeah, there's a feeling of being left out in the cold. So an imbalance, that's the um, five of pentacles and then the ace of wands. Uh, you may be trying to find a way to like get that power back, get that excitement back. Find that love again. Find your passion towards this connection again. Um, and trying to get this balance back, trying to feel like you are valued and that you have something to contribute to this space. All right, seven, second quarter, we have the Seven of Cups. All right, so Seven of Cups is saying you feel like you have a lot of options, which I'm sure you do. You have a lot of choices that you need to be making and that you need to be looking at. You need to take a little bit of a break. This first quarter might have kind of stressed you out a little bit. I'm just going to be honest with you. Um, and not in the sense that like it was bad or negative or anything like that. It was just a feeling of maybe being unmoored, unsure of what direction you're going in. I didn't mention this, but you do have a lot of going, a lot going on in your own sign. You have Jupiter, you have Uranus, like, and Uranus is the non-traditional ruler of, of Aquarius. So like, it's pumping into that Aquarius energy as well. You have Jupiter and Uranus. They come into a conjunction, I believe, in April. I believe it's April 20th, but I could be wrong about that date. But in April, I believe they come into conjunction. So you're either going to be experiencing, and that's the second quarter, you're either going to be experiencing this space where you're like, wow, like there's all this expansion of luckiness, breaking through these obstacles, feeling like I found my path and where I want to go and realizing like, wow, I really do have all these choices. I have all these things. I don't have to settle for one cup or something where I don't feel like, you know, I'm being honored and I'm being appreciated in the way that I should be. I go and look at all these other cups. All right, cool. Maybe take a little break. <laughs> take a little breather. You've got a King of Wands energy. Again, you might have grabbed that Ace of Wands and be like, I got the power. I'm doing this. I know where I'm going. Feeling very confident. You might have chosen to move forward in this connection. Here's the thing, though. Ooh, interesting. We got the lovers twice. Here's the thing, though. I'm a little scared that, you know, YouTube is going to be like, oh, my God, nudity. So I'm going to try to cover these folks up. But um, 
<sighs> we got the chariot. So you might be moving. I guess, it's, this might literally be lover's energy. You might be moving in with a partner. Um, you're feeling confident. You're feeling like, all right, let me go for it. Let me, let me choose a cup or let me figure out where I'm going to go with this. King of Wands is usually understands that it has responsibilities and that it is a leader and in order to be a leader it has to be on this throne it has to be able to channel he has to be able to channel his passion and his ability to lead in order to be successful it's a reluctant leadership though it's a reluctant desire to be on the throne king of wands would be much happier in more of a knight of wands energy in the field, on the floor, out and about. King of Wands craves freedom. And the throne brings a stability or a stagnation that the King of Wands is just not very happy about. But he understands his responsibility. He understands his role. He would just prefer and still have that longing for a little bit of freedom. So that might be driving you towards maybe making a different choice or moving getting out of the space that you've been in after you took a minute to relax a bit. And now that you understand it, like, hey, this is where I am. Maybe you chose to have it to the kid. Maybe you chose to, like, go in a new direction. This is where I am. I have to take responsibility for that. I need to get in line. I need to get in space. So you might move. You might move in with a lover. You might move on from a lover. Um, you might decide that, like, maybe you need a relationship that is that allows more freedom. But you're having that Jupiter Uranus conjunction. You're having this kind of uh, exploratory, expansive um, interaction between this very unconventional energy. So you might be feeling a bit unconventional. Maybe you decide you don't have to choose one cup. Maybe you decide you want to choose several cups and take a look at what that looks like and what that might be like in a relationship. Meh. There's a, there's a lot of different ways you can interpret this energy. We do get a patron once afterwards. Yeah, there's definitely a desire for you to have some freedom and exploration. Oh, and there's, there's some conflict that's coming from that. There's some conflict that's coming from that. If your partner or if the situation that you're working with, oh, see, now we got the high priestess, is a empress. They have high priestess energy, so Empress, very fertile, very uh, manifester, very much so enjoying, like, they're slow, they're calm, they enjoy having a life that is um, plush and luscious, you know, this could be your energy as well, we know Tauruses love that, um, but if your partner has that just, like, they, they love just the calmness, they don't necessarily want to be out and about all the time, ripping and running and doing all these mad things, they probably, they may not be all that interested in um, an unconventional relationship type, or they may not be, you know, down for anything other than, like, they want you to take on this king of wands, although you may be reluctant to do so. Or if you are the person who's encountering this time with the King of Wands, you know, your partner may be reluctant to do so, but you're wanting that stability. You want to move in. You want to take the next step in your relationship. Um, and there's just some uneasiness about this. Page of Wands is great energy. It's energy of like, yes, wonderful. This is the start of something new, you know, moving in together, having a kid, doing all that great stuff, maybe trying out a different type of relationship. It's the start of something new or a start of a new life for you. You know, maybe you decide to not make any of those choices and pick a different cup and move somewhere else on your own. Be your own independent person. But you're snatching that wand and you're going. And there's a little bit of conflict that's coming from that. We have the high priestess here, which says that there's there's some inner work that needs to be done. There is some going behind the veil and looking at the mysteries of life. That's shadow work. That's looking at what's coming, what needs to come together for you. Um, what is it that you really want? Where is it that you really want to go? We have a five of ones here. You've got quite a bit of five energy. So a call for expansion. Again, we're seeing that call for that expansive, expansive tense energy. Oh, we have a seven of ones. I don't know why I can say that was a five of ones. <laughs> Defensiveness. Okay. <laughs> seven of ones. Defensiveness about maybe the decision and the choice that you've made, particularly if maybe it's not what others thought that you were going to do. Or even what you thought you were going to do or how you envision your life. But maybe it's in more alignment with what it is you truly want. The decision that you end up making April, May, June 
it's going to be really impactful. It's going to be a big decision for you. It's going to be a big choice in like where your life is heading in the next couple of, I would say probably 10 to 12 years, um, really what direction you're going in. And I think one of the most important things is to look at like, what is it that are your deepest desires? What is it that you really want your life to look like? Yes. Yes. Double fold. People have expectations of you. That is just, it's showing up in your reading. People have expectations of you. People see you in a certain way. They understand your personality to be a certain way. They look to you for stability. They look for you to be grounded. They look for you to be supportive. And if you're wanting to do something that's a little outside the box, that's a little bit more true to you than what may be what they're looking for or expecting of you, this can throw things off a little bit for people around you. And it's really up to you to figure out how it is you want to approach this, how it is that you want to deal with this situation, and whether you're going to stay the course of following through with what it is you want, or whether you're going to be impacted so much by what the needs are of others. Your sister sign, Libra, has the North Node in Aries and that South Node in Libra. Everyone's kind of encountering these narratives and these stories around like, compromise and sacrifice for others people pleasing and things like that and the push is really to say like a south node in libra is saying that in the past you may have chosen others over yourself but right now you're in a space where you have to really get clear on like what does that look like for you what does your life look like for you and so we have um you also might be dealing with a gemini here got a lot of gemini energy that's the lovers twice um, Chariot is Cancer, King of Wands is, you know, Sagittarius, maybe High Priestess is Pisces energy, so there might be, again, so it might be Taurus energy, that's you, obviously, Magician is Fire Sign, and lots of Gemini energy, um, and then some Cancer and some Pisces, so maybe some Water Sign energy, there's some Water Sign folks involved in this discussion, um, that you're having to do this self-exploration. But we get this five of the swords and five of swords is saying that you're looking at this and like, how do I be prepared for this reaction? Like, how do I how do I circumvent this going forward? I don't want to constantly have to be keeping my guard up or like saying, hey, you know, I know I'm victorious and I know that you guys, you know, maybe you have questions or maybe you wanted me to do something else. But like, I want to I want to go do this. You know, you're trying to quiet your mind and find some peace, find that middle ground. Um I think we're going to pull one more for this because it's a little, it's a little bumpy in, in that, uh, in the fall. What do we get? Yeah, you're stressed out. <laughs> you're stressed out. You're two in your head and that's the thing. Like you have a push. This is all very like not necessarily conventional tourist energy. Because you got a lot of, like, you have this wonderful, beautiful empress to start off with. And you've got, like, one earth sign over here, this um, five of pentacles. But it's, like, being left out in the cold. So, again, it's still imbalanced. It's still not stable the way that you would probably prefer for it to be. Or nurturing and calm and cool and all this fun stuff. Um, it, it, it's a lot of, like, fiery pushes. It's a lot of that... Aquarius energy, honestly, of breaking out of these patterns. It's that Taurus and Uranus being in your in Taurus, Jupiter and Uranus being in your sign and pushing you. It's it's a lot of pushing you outside of your comfort zone, pushing you towards your dreams and towards what you're looking for. And then you know we talk about dreams. That's Neptune and Pisces. Neptune is sitting in Pisces doing a little thing there you know that's a little bit of sextile energy for you because it's right at the edge you know so like there's a little there's there's some pushing really to go towards like what it is you want and being your own person and doing these all things and it's a little bit of uncomfortable energy for you when you much more would like to be able to have like a more peaceful you want the fun you want the adventure you want the fire it wouldn't be showing up so much in your chart if you didn't you want the fire you want the growth you want the expansion it's just not your comfort zone it's just not where you used to be but you know that unless you want to be stuck you got to move you got to you got to make a choice but you're already thinking things a bit too much it might be a lot of this gemini energy and that there's too many options there's too many too many choices you know, and Gemini is able to navigate that energy because their mind's very, their mind is naturally expansive. 
it's naturally able to see how all the different options can play together and which choice they should they can make and da, 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 you know and they understand that like every choice will work out it seems here that you're not exactly sure like where the direction is going to go based on which choice you decide on, on which option you decide to choose and so like it just might be a little bit more uncomfortable for you to say that like okay i'm i'm going to just test this out i'm going to just try this out i don't know how it's going to work out i don't know what's going to come from this and i i would love to avoid the conflict i love to stop questioning myself i love to be able to just get out of my head i love to bring you know a little bit more peace while i explore and have fun like this is this is I can interpret this as fun energy. I can definitely interpret this page of wands and a seven of wands as stressful energy for a Taurus. They don't want they don't want this. They want the exploration. They want the expansion. They want to be able to be true to themselves. But you don't want you, you, this is not comfortable for you. So you're in a, your head a bit much in the fall. Um, but you're trying something new and you're on the road. Yes, I love it. Okay. And this is why I'm like, you got to trust the process. You got to choose you and you got to trust the process. Your card for the end of the, the last season is the Three of Cups. Fun. That's the route you're on. <laughs> it's the route to fun. We start off here with like a cup, a page of cups, something new, trying it out. Okay, we got this fishy here. Let's go with it. You know, you're like, yeah, okay, maybe we will try to, like, make this relationship work. But, you know, maybe I feel a little out of the cold. Maybe it's not working for me. Maybe this job isn't working for me. And maybe it's time for me to snatch up this wand and get up out of here, right? And you're like, okay, I have all these options. Maybe I need to relax a little. I know I've taken on these responsibilities. I'm not super comfortable with it. I'm not super comfortable, like, grabbing the wand and feeling independent and just doing my own thing. But I'm going to give it a shot. Maybe I'll move in with this person, you know, and try to make this work. Maybe I'll move on from this person and be my own person. But either way, I'm on this journey. This Ace of Wands, this starting off, this spark of life. This striving and just going based off of will alone, nothing else supporting you, nothing else supporting you, but you're just drive and will alone to be happy and fulfilled. You're, you're like, I'm rocking with it. I'm stressed out. <laughs> I'm stressed out. I'm trying to find balance. People are really like not working with me, but I'm going to go with it. And in this, in October, November, December, you get a little fun. It's working out. It's, it's, it's going okay. Look at that. Uh, see, you just have to be brave. That's that fire sign energy. That's that ace of wands energy. That's being brave. That's saying, okay, yeah, this is new. This is different, but I'm going to do it anyway. So in October, November, December, we're looking at celebration. We're looking at even marriage. Ooh, okay. We're going to have to cover that one up. Let me see if I can... Okay, you can still kind of see it. Oh, goodness, this is interesting. Okay, you can kind of see our friend here. I'm trying to, like, keep it keep it PG so I don't get, you know, busted. Let me put this down. Okay, so you can fully see your card. Okay. Um, actually, I'll switch it out with this one so that I don't have to worry about losing a card because I have to pull more. All right. It works out. Things work out. You're having a good time. You're celebrating. Maybe you get married. Maybe you take that chance and you move in with this individual and y'all are like, you know what? Let's make this official. Maybe that's what happens. And, you know, um, this is first three months, second three months. So April, May and June, maybe April, May and June, you get uh, engaged. And maybe that's the next step that you take with this relationship. Or maybe you just find stability and happiness. We literally have, you can't see it on here, but we have the three of cups that are here inside this nice little um, four way with the poles and stuff. It's, it's happiness. It's a home. It's joy. It's balancing that out and finding a little bit of stability, stabilizing this kind of more haphazard, raucous uh, fire energy. It works out. Now, here's the thing. We do get a 15 here. We get the devil card. So there may be some unhealthy habits and everything that's that's kind of backing up with this. And some of this may have driven you. And that was that's the story of the lovers. The lovers, which is card six, the next card down from it, and they reflect each other. They're literally the mirrors of each other, is the devil card. And so, yes, this could be a relationship and this could be an unhealthy attachment in this relationship. But it can also be if you're on this journey of individuation, of self-discovery, of being true to who you are and taking your own path, 
It could be that maybe some of the choices that you make lead you to form some unhealthy attachments to some unhealthy coping mechanisms. If you get super stressed out, whether it's because you're planning this marriage, because you're trying out something new, because you're stepping out on your own and you're on this new path and you're dealing with a lot of stress, either from the marriage or from the relationship or from your new like way of doing things. Don't turn to over partying, over drinking, over consuming, anything like that. Uh, don't just run into a relationship or run into a business or something like that. Some form of partnership that promises stability to avoid having to deal with the uncomfortableness of this change and of this transition. Stay mindful. Stay aware. The devil card doesn't have to just be, you know, negative. It can be, it's temptation. It's fun. It could be, it could be, I'm just going to put it out there with my wand. It could be kind of the culmination of all this fire energy that gives you a really spicy relationship. Like maybe y'all are a little kinky. You know what I'm saying? And maybe you're just going to accept that and you find someone who accepts that with you and you get to be this queen of pentacles space. You get to be this more stabilizing space. That's, where all, that's what you've been desiring from the beginning or your partner's been desiring from the beginning. But there's just been this process of kind of getting to this space of finding more stability, finding more security. Uh, it seems like you're definitely on a on a trip to finding security within yourself. And knowing who you are. Let's see what your overall, your outcome is. Ooh. Yeah, that five of wands. Yeah, that was, that was present. That was definitely present. That five energy has been very, like, there's a lot of expansion happening for you in the next season. And we're just, you're, we're just going to go with it. We're not going to fight it. We're just going to go with it. Um, Your outcome is five of wands. So yeah, there's definitely some tension. There's some expansion. There is some creative competition. Maybe it's fun fighting. Maybe it's like, ooh, this relationship's so spicy. You know, my relationship with life is so spicy that, you know, we're just like kind of going at it, but it's fun and we enjoy it. It it brings excitement to our relationship. But it can also be just you going back and forth with somebody. Um, And then this leading to you kind of isolating a little bit some isolation but isolation and leading you towards your legacy leading you towards like what are your long-term goals it seems like there is just maybe I maybe I don't know how long you've been experiencing this that's fascinating <laughs> yeah that's fascinating because it seems like you may have been on this path trying to get to this space where you don't have to fight for what it is that you want your life to look like where you can just kind of enjoy it this energy over here you know like I said maybe you like the tension maybe you like the growth maybe you need it to push you to not stagnate stagnate you know to not just get stuck um but from this from this friendly competition from this kind of waking you up space you know maybe you have a little bit of calm space and then like it's like no like get back to it get back to the spiciness get back to the arousal get get back to like wake up um you do spend a little bit of time it is going to leave probably next year i would say towards some a hermit moment so you may be in and out of a desire to be really present and be out there and be very social and then to being just like by yourself and being able to contemplate I definitely feel that this would be a much more comfortable energy for you Taurus but we get a 10 of pentacles and we get a 10 of cups there is joy and happiness and legacy that is coming from this I think it's just a little bit more spicier than you thought it would be. I think there's just a lot more tension there and activity and fire there than you would have, than you might have thought it would be. I would say don't run away. Don't run away next year. In 2024, when you experience pushback, when you doubt yourself, when you might have, you know, conversations with others and they don't agree with you, don't run away from that. These are challenges to push you to stand up for yourself. And we know the bull. Here's the thing. The bull is definitely going to stand up for themselves. Like the bull is going to charge. You wave that flag in front of them, they're running at it. Or the red flag in front of them, they're running at it. They're charging. You, you know, they're standing their ground. They're stubborn. You know, 
This fiery energy is pushing you. It's pushing you to stand up for what you want. It's pushing you to get out of your comfort zone. It's pushing you to actually be who you're meant to be and who you want to be. And this this energy of next year is really pushing you either into the relationship that you've greatly desired, into the into the building, the legacy that you've always wanted to have, like what you've always long term, what you wanted your life to look like, whether that is with someone now or opening up your horizon so you can meet someone who's in alignment with what you've always wanted. But the thing is, and it's not here in the cards, but as someone who understands this type of energy, you have to be truthful with yourself about what it is you want. Because you're going to create something. You're going to bring in something in your life. Is it actually going to be this? Or is it going to be the expectations that other people have placed upon you? Is this your Ten of Pentacles? Is this your Ten of Cups? Or is this someone else's? You know, the, can the chariot card can also be the mother. It's cancer energy. It's mother energy. Is this your dream or is this somebody else's? Are you living out someone else's story? Are you living out your own? Are you stepping into your own power? Or are you attaching yourself to someone else's dreams and finding yourself in this space of what they want you to be instead of being who you want to be? And although you might not be comfortable in that role, you know that it's your choice that brought you to this space. So, all right, that's going to be it for your 2024, um, Taurus. And now we're going to do my next new thing. We're going to pull out an Oracle card for you all. Now, uh, Taurus, you might watch some of my videos. You might not because I only do four videos, four signs on my chart, on my channel. Usually I do um, Pisces, Scorpio, Leo, and Libra. So you might... Not know that I don't really do oracle cards, but I don't really do oracle cards. But I think it's nice to get an oracle card, a little birdie, um, for the next year. Oh, you got the eagle. Okay, let's read what the eagle's about. It's a beautiful card. Oh, let me put it up so you can actually see it. It's a beautiful card. Okay. The eagle, number 10, the end or the beginning, depending on how you look at it. All right, so... I am the eagle, the thread that binds you to spirit. I am the great sky dancer. I am your ascension made manifest. I am power and flight. I am the one who soars highest on the least amount of effort. I am faith in that which carries me. You've been called to evolve and I am your guide. Your soul demands growth and I am your nourishment. I am your signal to climb higher, push harder, and then let go. Allow the final push and then float freely on the changes that are coming. Do not attempt to, cheer, to steer the process. You may have become too rigid in your spirituality. Clinging to dogma can hamper inner flight. Enlightenment will come not from books or classes. It is a lifetime journey. You may not know when the next thermal is coming to lift your wings, but have faith and make the leap anyway. Break the chains, learn to soar, get outside of your head and fly. You are gaining altitude, you are reaching the sky, you are limitless, you are equal. Like I said, I understand this energy. I've got a lot of earth, I got a lot of air energy. I, I, I understand the energy that's coming up here and this is why I'm like, it's probably not very comfortable for you. It's probably why you're getting so much of these wands, why you're getting so much of this kind of like fiery push to do this, but it's that push to grow. And here's the thing. Fire energy, particularly Ace of Wands, the Magician, like this Aries energy, this Martian energy is the energy that creates the fire of our life. It's the it's the spark of life. But that spark of life has to have somewhere to go. And that's often what Taurus brings is it grounds that energy so that, like I said, it's sustainable. It has somewhere to be. It has somewhere to grow. And you can get really comfortable in being that for others and for yourself. It's just that soft place to land. That nourishing presence, presence that allows people to grow and expand when they're going through hard times. But it might create a space where you don't ever push yourself to grow. And next year, 2024, it's an eight year power year. 
you, it's time to grow. It's time for you to expand and push a little harder to actually get your dreams, to actually get what you want out of life. So that's your general reading, Taurus, for 2024. Let's get into your relationships, which we may have already seen quite a bit about, but we'll see if we hear anything else about it. We're going to do singles and we're going to do couples. So we'll get a little bit more um, specific with that. And then we'll also see about, we'll do the final one will be um, monies. 